Hello everyone, my name's Eulister and welcome back to more Hardcore Minecraft. As you can see, we are still in the village that we were in last time. Only now, I've started making the library. Although I'm not entirely happy with this initial design I've got for it, but we can work on that, we can work on that. But you'll see inside, we have books, we have lecterns, we have four librarians so which one of you is is the mending it's not you you're not mending you've got channeling though which would be useful i suppose when we eventually get a trident uh you are the mending one because you have the, the gold badge medal belt buckle whatever you want to call it and then over here we have the power four librarian who helped me to get power five onto the bow and then this this one oh that's right you gave me fortune three for this pickaxe Thank you very much for that. It will be greatly appreciated when I start mining things in the future. Now, we're not going to be spending this episode here. This episode is not going to be about building a library. No, no. Instead, we have other things to do. Namely, getting resources. Now, what do I mean when I say I need resources? Well, I've got a bow, but no way to make arrows. I don't have elytra yet, but I'm going to need gunpowder to help make rockets. And I'm also going to eventually need zombie flesh to trade with clerics in order to level them up. In other words, I need to make a mob farm. And what better place to build a mob farm than in the middle of a body of water on an island, giving me a bit of space all around so I don't need to worry as much about mob spawns on the ground here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I want to level this out because I'm actually going to make the collection system slightly below this point. So I'm going to need to just get rid of all of this dirt. I'm not picking it up because I don't have the space for it. Uh, Genius Me did not bring any chests with him to place things in so we're just going to have to deal with this for now. But what I want to do is, I want to make some steps almost into the ground a little bit. Like, down that far will do. We don't need to go super far down. And then we're going to start building from this point. Now one other thing I haven't mentioned yet is I'm not going to make it as tall as usual. I'm not going to rely on, on like gravity and fall damage to kill the mobs. Instead, what I'm going to be doing is using campfires. The reason I'm going to be using campfires is because it turns out campfires don't burn entities. Like these blocks here on a normal fire would just burn. They would just get destroyed. But on a campfire, that doesn't happen. Which makes sense when you consider the fact that you can actually cook meat on a campfire. And then when they're done, they kind of spring up and land on the campfire again. So that would be a very weird uh, system to have in place if it burnt the food that it just cooked. Okay, so if we say that this is the back of the system here, this is going to be the back wall, the very back wall. So we're going to start building up here a little bit. I think what I'm going to do is make a smaller version for now just to see if it actually works as a system. To see if I'm on the right kind of track and then if it does I can just make it bigger after that. Yeah that makes sense. I've gone ahead and built this initial platform for things to spawn on so I just need to put some water down and check that it covers most of it and it does if I put a second one here it should cover the remainder of the platform although I think I gotta be careful that I don't accidentally make an infinite which I would do if I put one there and one there so if I put one there and then another one here I don't get that middle block. And the problem here is if I if I put a water bucket there, I then get two infinites. Yay! Which is great, but now I can't actually get rid of any of this water. 
So for now we're just going to use the very simple solution of bringing it forward one block and then it works perfectly. See that covers that. This water bucket will cover the rest. Problem solved. <laughs> it's a temporary fix, but it's a fix nonetheless. This does of course mean that I now have to place the dispensers in and then set up some kind of redstone timer with a long enough delay that it lets things spawn and then has plenty of time to push things off the edge. Okay, I think this should work. What I'll do is if I place a redstone torch here and then set all of these repeaters to their maximum delay, it's not going to be a huge uh, gap in time because there's not that many repeaters in all honesty. That's uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. That's 14 repeaters. But what will happen if I put a repeater here as well. In fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and put two more there. And then we're going to add two more here as well, which actually works good as a uh, safety precaution because now what's going to happen is I'll put a redstone torch here. The signal is going to come up here, enter here, come down here, come this way. And then at this point, it's going to... Oh, wait, wait, no, I don't... I don't need this part over here then, do I? I can just have it end there, because what will happen is the signal will come here and get split two ways. In one instance, it's going to come up here and then trigger all of this. And then at the other point, it's going to just start the cycle round again so that should work that should work let me just double check that i've got my water buckets in here which i do so if i just start this off i can then get rid of that because the signal will just repeat forever one loop second loop and then the third one should reactivate it again perfect Absolutely perfect. Now I just need to break that so it stops. Break that so it stops. Perfect. I know what I'm doing, I swear. So now what I need to do is to get a bunch of hoppers, campfires, and chests. And I brought none of that with me. So I gotta go back and get all of that. One other thing I need to do at some point is to widen this bridge I've made because, especially in the nether, doing something like this is just a death sentence waiting to happen. I mean, let's be honest. This isn't the smartest thing I could be doing right now. We appear to have hit on a slight snag. Uh, as you can see, I'm inside the spawning area on the platform the problem is, uh, the light from the campfires is actually making it impossible for anything to spawn here because the light does not go lower than 5 currently. So, a bit of tweaking is going to be needed for this. I think what I need to do is design it slightly differently so that the spawning platform is maybe on a second platform above this one somehow and then do the water pushing i don't know I, i'll need to think about how to do this i was actually joking when i said that i was just gonna build a second platform above that first one but that's actually what i've gone ahead and done as you can see the spawning platform is now here slightly higher up than before uh, and there's the original platform down there with permanent water running through it. And if I block up this hole here, you will see that I am now in permanent darkness. Perfect darkness. Spawnable darkness. Light level zero. 
And that is all we need this place to be. It's not a massive space, but that doesn't really matter. Like I said, this is going to be just a quick test to see if this actually works. So what I need to do now is come over here and start this rolling. Get that moving. So this comes around and that, uh, oh, I didn't actually reconnect this side up. Never mind. Let me just go ahead and do it again. So this should come around now and trigger the water to move. Perfect. And then it comes around a second time and the water should turn off. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So I can now just leave that running. And this is the part where I now build a gigantic tower once again, up into the sky, which I'm going to need for AFK reasons. But actually what I'm going to do is I want to get my ladders out as well and build as I'm going. Because otherwise, there's the very high risk that I'm going to end up falling to my death because of this. I mean, sure, the water isn't that far away, but... I could I'll just hold shift and do this much easier. The water's not that far away, but is it really worth the risk in a hardcore world? The answer, of course, is no. Welcome to my AFK room. It's not very roomy, I admit, but it gets the job done. I'm safe here, and I can just wait for things downstairs to spawn, die, and give me their loot. So I'm going to stay here for about 10, 20 minutes, maybe closer to 30, and then we're going to see what my spoils are. Sounds like a plan. Not a lot of items, but then that was to be expected anyway, because this was just supposed to be a test. And I'd say that this proves that this idea works. All I've got to do now is to make it bigger, do a little bit of tweaking, I think, in regards to the platform positioning. And we could be on to a winner with this. And I'm actually hopeful that this could be the best way that I'm going to be getting all of the items I need for making, uh, making rockets for the Elytra. Keeping myself stocked up with arrows. But that is going to be it for this episode, I think. I'm going to work on this off camera, and when we come back next time, this should all be finished. So I hope you've enjoyed this, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.